You know, about six months ago, I thought I would be working on bosses for Vagrant next, and that still hasn't happened. So let's take a look at my commit history and see where all that time went. So on March 10th, I did some unspecified graphical improvements and added screen shake. That's interesting. Then in the span of the next month or so, I added a new enemy, a new area, and a commit labeled, hmm, I wonder what's in there. After that, I see that a new ability got added, and uh, what's this? I appear to have gotten lost in the world of making things look shiny, also known as shaders. Adding shiny things to my game made quite a big difference, and the world feels much fuller now. If you haven't seen my video about how I got Pygame a graphics library that isn't even supposed to use the GPU to work with shaders, you should check out my How I Added Shaders to Pygame video from a couple months ago. In short, in my traditional way of learning things, I ignored all tutorials and dug through a mess of Stack Overflow questions, sample code, and OpenGL documentation to create a Pygame shader module so I can have my shiny stuff without thinking about OpenGL. There's a link in the description to it, but I didn't bother to write documentation, so use that at your own risk. If you aren't familiar, shaders aren't exactly what they sound like. They don't just shade things. Shaders are essentially just programs for your GPU that can be used to perform a variety of tasks. Two big ones are vertex shaders and fragment shaders. But there are also others like compute shaders, which I won't go into. When using shaders in OpenGL, you have to combine vertex shaders, which transforms vertices of your object, and fragment shaders, which assign color to individual fragments of your geometry. In most cases, including mine, these fragments are just pixels. The vertex shader in my case is pretty simple since I'm just using it to create rectangles converted to OpenGL space from pixel space. The fragment shaders are where the fun is at. I used a basic fragment shader that just does basic texture mapping, and I also used three other shaders to make the game look fancy. These three extra fragment shaders are fun to talk about and give a bit of an interesting introduction to the world of shaders. Just from looking at the difference in Vagrant with and without shaders, you can easily see all three shaders in effect. But if you aren't familiar with shaders, you may not know which effects belong to which shader. I'll go into the shader code later, but first let's take a look at what these shaders are. The first shader, and the most complicated shader, is the background shader. Vagrant is set in bubbles of space in terms of the lore, and I wanted to replace the boring striped background with something that represented that. If you look carefully, or if you've got an eye for this stuff, you can spot a moving Perlin noise pattern. The second shader is the bloom slash glow slash blur shader on the lighting. Everything is lit like a star in Vagrant rather than having a circular glow. At first this was done out of necessity, but I ended up liking it and never updating it. The final shader is the vignette and shadow shader. Not only does it make the edges of the screen darker, but it desaturates it as well. This brings a lot of focus to the center of the screen for the game space and makes the UI pop out more. The shadow part of the shader adds these little black shadows to almost everything in the game. Let's take a look at the last shader first, since it's probably the simplest in concept. Here's the shader code, but if you're new to shaders, you probably won't know what you're looking at here. In my case, this shader code is being run for every single pixel. So if it's being run for every single pixel, it logically takes in the pixel coordinates and a source image, which is exactly what's happening here with the F text chords and the texture object. Continuing that logic, if I'm coloring an individual pixel, I need to return a color at the end. Down at the bottom of my main function, you can see that I assign something to glfrag color. This is glsl's, aka OpenGL shading language, way of assigning the color. Whatever color I assign to glfrag color is the color I use. With this simple concept, you can do a lot of fun stuff since typically per pixel calculations are too slow to run on the CPU. One last thing that I should mention is that you can pass in variables called uniforms to the shader that stays the same for every pixel handled in the run, but I can change the values between runs. Anyways, taking a look at the logic here, you can see that I calculate the distance the pixel is from the center of the screen, which is used in generating the darkness at the edges of the screen for the vignette. I also check the texture's color for the pixel, which in this case, my texture is just the game's visuals that I already generated in Pygame. Most of the code here is actually just generating outlines for white zones, these things, and shadows for the rest of the game. The white zone 
outlines are red. Notice how the first value in the vector for the color is much higher, that's the red. The shadow outlines are black as can be seen here. This just overrides the colors from the original Pygame generated texture if the coordinates being checked don't have an assigned color. In my case, I set it up to be an alpha of 0 on Pygame's end if there is no color. As a quick example for the shadow, I look at a pixel that's nearby that's up and to the left of the pixel currently being handled to see if it's colored. If that pixel being looked up is colored and the main pixel being handled by the shader is not, then I switch the color to black for the shadow. The rest of the shader is also pretty simple. I calculate a one-third brightness color for the pixel, then further darken it based on the distance from the center and blend the original color with the darkened color based on the distance from the center of the screen. And there we have it, the first shader. The next shader is the shader used for lighting. On a higher level, I use this shader to generate an image that gets blended with the original Pygame generated visuals for lighting rather than replacing the Pygame visuals like the last shader did. Additionally, the input is the lighting texture, which is just lights and darkness. This is just a simple modified Gaussian blur. Typically you blur horizontally and then you take the result of that blur and then blur that vertically to get a circular blur. But due to some technicalities and the way I wrote my module for using shaders with Pygame, taking the output of one shader for use in a second pass isn't possible at the moment. So I applied them separately, which gives you a separate horizontal and vertical blur that gives you the star looking lighting. I do have some options for proper blurs if I wanted to though. First I can just update my library, but second, and this is easier if I really wanted to do it, I could just use a single pass Gaussian blur shader which apparently does exist. Anyways, let's take a look at the shader code. We check the variable or uniform pass to the shader to see if we're blending horizontally or vertically. Then we just take a look at the neighboring pixels at 1, 2, 3, etc. pixels away. We add these colors to our result colors with predefined weights so that the closer colors have more impact on the result. I don't think I've seen this star-like blur in other games before, and I kind of like it. Let me know in the comments if you like this type of blur, or if you would prefer to see a normal circular blur. Anyways, on to the final and most interesting shader, the background shader. This one takes in a lot of custom variables for different effects. Explaining everything fully in depth would take a while, so I'll try to give the short version. The basic idea is to have two textures going into the shader. First we have a Perlin noise image. It's important to note that this is an image and not dynamically generated since an image is just faster. And second we have our screen text, which is just everything else in the game world. For the other inputs we take in the time passed along with a bunch of configuration constants. The time can be used to animate the whole thing. We start by sampling the noise texture three times with weights at different scales that are affected by time in different ways. This is standard practice when dealing with Perl and noise. If you've used Python's noise library, there's a parameter called octaves that basically does this. It creates a more detailed pattern from the original noise. After we've sampled our noise, stripes of darkness and a smooth blob of darkness at the center are added using some funny math. The end result is a grayscale color that I can use for the second half of the background shader. Depending on the brightness of the pixel according to the noise, darkness blob, and stripe sampling, Different colors are assigned. These colors are restricted to a specific set since pixel art normally doesn't have gradients. Since it's a set, I can just use a bunch of if statements for each of the colors. In the lowest tier if statement for the lowest brightness, we have to do the final funky trick in the shader, which is the reflection of the world. If you look in the actual game, you can see the world is subtly warped and reflected in the background. To do this, we first have to warp the lookup coordinates that we're using for the world texture based on distance from the center of the screen. Then we take the color at those coordinates. If the color was assigned a non-zero alpha, as mentioned before, we modify it to match the dark blue background and use that color. If the color is not assigned, we use a fixed dark color. And finally, we apply the color generated to the fragment color. And there we have it, all the shaders so far in Vagrant. I plan on adding more for different attacks and other things, but this covers most of the basics. Shaders are a weird mix between creative thinking and math, and I think it's really interesting to see how people approached creating different shaders. So hopefully you found my shaders interesting. 
Now that I'm done with my shaders tangent for Vagrant, the next thing on my list is to actually add a boss this time. That being said, I have some other projects that need some devlogs lined up next, including an online multiplayer game I've been working on occasionally for fun. As always, you can find my unreleased Vagrant source code on Patreon, so check that out if you're interested. Hopefully I'll see y'all in the next video. Mm -hmm.